Hello, friends. I hope you all doing well. Today, I will be painting this cozy campfire scenery. So I painted this one the other day in my sketchbook, and I really like how it turned out. So I decided to paint another one with you today. The reference photo for this painting is from Unplash.com. And I will put the link down in the description, just in case you uh, want to check it out. So here I have 9 by 12 cold press watercolor paper, uh, but you can use any uh, kind of paper that you have. I cut the paper into two, but I only need one for today. And here I have washi tape for tapping around the border of the painting. I'm using another piece of paper to put underneath of my painting because I want to keep my table clean. So now I'm using washi tape to tape around the border of the painting just because I want to have nice clean edge around my painting. But you don't have to do this step if you feel like you don't need to. The size of the paper that I'm using today is about six by nine inches but you can use any size of paper uh, that you like i also have two jars of water for cleaning brushes during the painting i'm using paper palette for mixing paint and i also have some cotton cloth for cleaning brushes today i am using acrylic gouache paint but you can also use acrylic paint or traditional gouache if you like. So these are the colors that I am using today. I have titanium white, burnt umber, jet black, Prussian blue, carmine, permanent scarlet, permanent yellow, blue compost, and a copper blue. For the brushes, today I am using half inch uh, flat brush, number 8 rail brush, number 6 filbert brush, and number 6 liner brush. I also have a sponge for painting the leaves. So first I have titanium white and cobalt blue. I'm using a half inch uh, flat brush. First, I'm just gonna dip it in the water and then I'm getting a little bit of white. I'm adding some blue. So this is gonna be the color for the sky. Before I paint on my painting, sometimes I like to test the color um, on another piece of paper to see if I like it. So for this time, I feel like I need more a uh, uh, blue compost to the mixture so here I'm adding a little bit more blue compost and then I'm just mix again add some more water so now I'm gonna test the color again uh, to see if I like it and I think this time I'm happy with this color so I'm gonna go ahead and start at the top part of the painting and then I'm gonna blend it down and I just go back and forth with my brush to make sure that the paint looks smooth. Since the paper that I'm using has a little bit of texture, so by going back and forth with my brush, um, it helps to spread the paint evenly on the surface. So now I'm adding more blue to the paint mixture because I'm moving down to the darker part of the sky. I'm gonna add some more blue. And then I'm just gonna blend it in. But I need some water because my brush starts to feel a little bit hard to move on the paper. Now I'm adding more blue and then just blend it in again. Make it look smooth. I'm adding even more blue now because it needs to be darker and I just keep on blending try to make it look smooth 
I'm getting some more water and then I'm adding some more paint and just blend it in again going back and forth with my brush so now I'm gonna clean my brush I need some more white and then rinse my brush So now I'm gonna mix a more uh, light blue and then I'm gonna put in the between of the two blue to make the smooth transition. So now I'm adding more blue and then I'm just keep blending until I'm happy with the layer. So adding some more blue. Blend it up. I'm adding some more blue and then just keep blending again so now I have Prussian blue and copper blue and rinse my brush again this time I'm just gonna use copper blue add some more water and now I'm gonna just continue to the darker part of the sky I'm blending it out add some more blue and then go back and forth with my brush a little bit of more blue to the lower part and then just keep blending again I'm going back and forth with my brush so now I'm adding a little bit of uh, the lighter blue and then I'm gonna mix with some more white I'm trying to make the transition look smooth and then I keep going with the darker blue so now I have some jet black I'm adding some water and then I'm mixing the black with Prussian blue and then I'm gonna continue to the darker part of the sky and just going back and forth with my brush now I'm adding some more black and then blend it in I'm adding some more blue and then just go in the back and forth with my brush adding some more blue I'm blending it down and then I'll just keep doing that so now I have burnt umber I'm adding a little bit of water and then I'm gonna mix that with Prussian blue and black and then I'm gonna continue with the dark part of the background I'm adding some more water so now it's moving to the lighter part of uh, the ground so I'm gonna just blend it in add some more burnt umber a little bit of more blue and then I'm just gonna move it down to the bottom of the painting now I'm gonna need a little bit of more blue add a little bit of water and then just keep going down now the paint uh, look a little bit thinner but uh, that's okay because I'm gonna add another layer on top of that some more burnt umber and then just cover uh, the bottom part of the painting I'm blending it out I'm adding some more blue some more burnt umber now you can see the second layer is uh, much more opaque make sure there's the paint cover on the uh, white part of the paper now I'm gonna rinse my brush so now I'm adding some more brush and blue some more white and then I'm gonna mix some prism blue with some white and some burnt umber so I'm trying to mix the blue gray uh, color for the leaves on the background I'm adding some more blue and then I'll just keep mixing until I get the right color so now I'm gonna test and see so I think I like that and here I have the sponge so I'm gonna dip it in some 
color. I think I want it to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to add some more blue. So now that I'm happy with this color, I'm going to start dapping uh, really light on the sky part of the painting. So as you can see uh, from the reference photo, I'm doing the leaves for the trees on the background right now. So I'm just using the sponge. I'm adding some paint to the sponge and just randomly uh, dapping on the paper. I'm adding some more paint and then just dapping on top of the paper. So now I'm going to add more to the bottom part and then I'm going to mix with some more white for the top part of the leaves. And then some more on the other side. I'm mixing in some more white because the um, further ones are lighter so I'm trying to do a different shade of blue just randomly I think we still have a little bit more to go some in the corner and then some on this side So now I'm switching to number 8 rail brush. I'm adding a little bit of water and then I'm gonna get the blue gray that I already have on the palette. I'm mixing a little bit more. So this is gonna be for the tree from far away. So they, um, they are lighter. So I'm gonna just draw them with my brush and I'm not trying to make them perfect because uh, these are the tree in the background and they're also so far away so I'm just gonna draw the main trees with the branches and I'm not going to draw too many trees uh, with this color because I'm going to add another layer of trees that are closer than these uh, with darker blue. So here I'm going to just adding more branches just to make it look more like trees from far away. And then I think I need one more here. Maybe one more here too. And I'm adding a little bit darker blue. And then I'm gonna move. I think this one is for the closer tree. It's still far away. So I'm gonna make darker blue. For these trees. Some more trees and then now the uh, branches so now I'm gonna rinse my brush I have some more black and Prussian blue first I'm gonna just use Prussian blue for the next layer of the trees the one that are uh, a little bit closer to us so they are a little bit darker so here I'm gonna just draw the shape of the trees and the uh, branches because I already have uh, some of the leaves uh, when I use the sponge I'm adding burnt umber to the blue and then I'm just gonna keep drawing the trees So now I'm gonna do the uh, big tree, that the one that uh, the most closer to 
to us. So I need a few more branches over here. I'm adding another tree on the right side. And also a few branches for that tree. And then I'm gonna make this tree look thicker. And then also this one. I'm gonna add a few more branches to the trees. And I want them to be um, overlap to each other at the top part. I'm gonna add another tree on this side so I'm gonna make them a little bit darker I'm gonna add a little bit of black and I'm gonna start from the bottom and then going up just like that I'm adding some more blue some water and some black I want to make this tree a little bit bigger so I'm gonna add some more paint to this side and then I'm gonna add a few more branches for the tree so some are small and some are a little bit bigger and another tree next to it I also make the trees uh, from this side a little bit bigger and darker now I need some more blue and I'm gonna add some more trees on this side I'm adding a little bit of water and I'm gonna mix some black and burnt umber to the blue so now I'm gonna start from the bottom of the trees and then just move up like that And one more on this side. I think I'm gonna add another tree next to the big one. So now I'm gonna paint the lower bushes that are closer to the ground. And I'm still using the same brush and same color. I'm just kind of dapping on the paper. I also want to add a few more leaves for the front trees. And they are a little bit darker than the the leaves that I use the sponge for. I'm adding a few more branches for the front trees also. So now I'm gonna add some more bushes and plants um, near to the ground. This is a little bit different from the reference photo but just because I really like um, plants and trees and um, leaves so I'm adding a little bit more and here I still have the same brush and same color I just kind of add some more um, plants to the ground I'm trying to just fill up the space from the bottom where it's really dark so I'm gonna just kind of adding the leaves and because the plants are in the dark on the background from far away so i'm not gonna try to paint them to details i just kind of want to um, paint the shapes of them so you can see i have some that are smaller and some are a little bit larger and i also have some that are taller and some are shorter just to um, create a variety of plants and then I'm gonna add some more uh, leaves to the trees but I'm not gonna add too many I only need a few so I'm gonna add a few more branches also and then a few more leaves and I'm adding some more plants to the shadow part of the trees. So 
So now I'm gonna add some wax and some dry leaves on the ground. I'm still using the same brush. I'm adding some water and maybe some more tall grass. And some more leaves. So I kind of try to adding some more um, plants and maybe dry leaves just to uh, balance out the uh, painting a little bit. So now I'm adding some more burnt umber. And these are maybe rocks or dry leaves on the ground. So now I'm going to add some water and then I'm going to continue with the uh, plants. So at this point of the painting, it's really is up to you how you like your background. Uh, you can keep it as the reference photo or if you like me, I like to add more uh, plants and trees to my painting. So I'm going to keep working on that and I'm going to just add more of them um, until I feel like uh, I have enough. And even though this is just the background for the painting, because later on the campfire is going to cover a uh, part of it, I still uh, want to spend my time working on it to make sure that it looks finished before I paint the campfire on top. Um, I think it will help uh, balance the painting out a lot. So while I'm continuing working on this, um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, the painting today. So for this painting, I'm not trying to make it look realistic but more like uh, painterly and expressive. Um, my main focus is to capture the mood and the feeling of this scenery. When I first saw this uh, graphics photo, I really really like it and I wanted to paint it um, because it gave me this cozy and warm feeling when I look at it. I feel like I want to be in this scenery and sitting next to the campfire. And that is why I want to transfer that feeling into this painting. I want to uh, create my own version of this campfire. And I want that um, every time when I look at this painting, I can feel the cold evening air. Um, the warm, cozy campfire and the sound of the surrounding nature. Um, and I'm sure that if you are uh, painting this scenery with me today, you probably have your own version of this scenery um, and how you want your painting to express your feeling. Um, and I think that is what makes uh, your painting really special. Um, especially to you. To me, I really like the story uh, behind the painting and I want to focus more on um, telling the story uh, to you through my art. So yeah, um, that are just uh, some of my thoughts about uh, today's painting. So let's get back to today's painting. So here you can see that I uh, already finished the top part of the trees uh, and I'm moving down to the lower part where it's uh, really dark. So I'm just using the mixture of black, uh, Prussian blue and burnt umber to just kind of um, fill in out the space on the bottom. Um, so these could be the, the some of the rocks or dry leaves that are on the ground. 
Now I'm going to move a little bit further down to the bottom part of the painting. Here you can see from the reference photo that they are mostly just dry leaves on the ground. So I'm going to just quickly add that to the painting. And I still have the same brush and same color. Um, so I'm just gonna paint very loosely. And I don't really need to be super detailed with this. And now I'm just gonna turn my uh, palette around so I can have some room for mixing new colors. So here I have Carmine and I'm still using number 8 ground brush. I'm just gonna add some water to the brush and I'm gonna just sketch out the uh, rocks uh, around the campfire using this color. So I'm gonna start from the left side and I just roughly sketch out the shapes of the rocks using my brush. And I don't really need to be too detailed with the sketch because later on I'm gonna paint over these sketching lines. You can use any color uh, to sketch this as long as you can see the sketching lines. Um, I'm using this dark red because it's uh, one of the colors that I'm gonna use for the campfire uh, and I don't want it too bright so that when I add another layer of paint on top of it um, it won't be too visible normally I would grab a uh, graphite pencil for sketching but since my painting is a little dark right now it would be a little bit hard for me to see the lines so I'm using uh, my brush and paint instead um, you can also use a color pencil, maybe a brighter color, to sketch these uh, rocks if you feel more comfortable. So yeah, it's really uh, up to you. So you can see that I'm just taking my time to build up the sketch. I'm not rushing this step because it's important to, to make the sketch accurate. So yeah, I need to be accurate, but not detailed yet. And I also want to make sure that I leave enough room for the uh, fire in the middle, because I sometimes can get carried away with the rocks. So now I'm gonna start sketching the fire in the middle. And it's really simple. I just sketch it as, um, as a small mountain. So now I'm gonna clean my brush because I'm gonna add more colors. So here I have titanium white, permanent scarlet, permanent yellow, and I'm still using the same brush. I'm gonna start by mixing white, red, and orange together. And when I'm happy with the color, I'm gonna go ahead and start from the top part of the fire. As you can see from the reference photo, um, the outside of the fire seems to be more red and orange uh, and the inside part are more like yellow and white. So I'm gonna just kind of light down the first layer with the uh, red-orange color. So here I'm gonna just add more orange and I'm gonna just continue with the outside of the fire. I think I'm gonna just uh, go ahead and fill out the shape of uh, the whole fire with this color for now. And then later I'm gonna add uh, brighter colors on top of uh, this layer later. So now I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow to the uh, middle part of the fire. And I want to make sure that I'm gonna fill out um, the whole shape of the uh, fire with the first layer. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna mix um, a brighter color. So this color is gonna be for the middle part of the fire. Uh, where it's really bright. When I painted this painting uh, in my sketchbook, 
I got really overwhelmed when I got to this part where I have to paint a fire uh, because I never painted a fire before so I didn't know uh, how to paint it or where to start so I kinda uh, took a little bit of time to analyze the reference photo and I broke it down into uh, four, four parts uh, so the first part is the uh, uh, the darkest part of the fire which is outside uh, and that is the color uh, red and then um, next to that red is the orange uh, which I uh, can mix from red and yellow together and then next to that orange would be the yellow and the last layer, layer which is the inside part the brightest part would be uh, a white mixed with yellow and uh, that really uh, helps uh, simplify the step um, and now I'm painting it for the second time I feel a lot more confident and I know uh, where to start with it so as you can see here I already have some red um, some yellow and even the uh, middle part of the fire which is really bright now uh, so now I'm gonna mix the orange and I'm gonna use some of that to uh, to make the transition between the the red and the yellow and then I'm gonna need some for even the outside where the uh, flames start to fade in the air and then it's a little bit for the top part of the fire so now I'm gonna start painting the spark of the fire and I'm using orange to uh, to paint the one that are closer to the flame I use the same brush but I try to get the small tip uh, to make the thin lines for the sparks so as you can see from the reference photo most of the sparks are uh, bright yellow but there's a uh, few of them are um, in dark red and uh, some of them are orange so I try to um, kind of light out the dark colors first here I'm adding the orange shade to some places as I'm building up the details for the fire and I really taking the time to look at the reference photo to make sure that I get it right right now the fire may uh, look a little bit too big compared to the one in the reference photo um, but we still have the burning logs that are in the fire and the rocks uh, around it uh, so I'm gonna add that uh, later um, and uh, for now I'm gonna just keep working on the um, details for the fire so right now I'm going back with the red and I'm just adding that to a few places uh, of the fire where um, it need to be a little bit darker I think I'm gonna start working on the uh, burning logs so here I have jet black cobalt blue and the same brush number 8 round I'm gonna start by adding uh, the dark red to black and some blue a little bit more red so now I have a dark uh, purple color and this is gonna be for the burning logs in the fire here I'm just lining down the first layer as you can see it still look a little transparent but I'm gonna add more layers on top of that so here I'm gonna just continue with the logs and I'm not trying to make the shape look um, perfect but sometimes I would go back and add uh, uh, another layer 
and some more details uh, just to make sure that the the locks look uh, like uh, in the reference photo so now I'm gonna just add a little bit more to this one to make it look longer next I'm gonna move on to the shadow part of the rocks and I'm still using the same dark purple color and the same brush I'm just gonna uh, paint the shadow part for now the, the part that are darkest like this part right here um, the bottom part of uh, the rock and I'm gonna add another uh, burn lock here too still with the same color I'm gonna add a few strokes to the background part uh, where the uh, bottom of the trees are because that is where the uh, fire kind of reflecting on the plants so I, I kind of want some purple there and I'm back to the burning wood now I'm adding another uh, layer on top of that so now I'm just mixing the orange color uh, for the burning part of the log so as you can see here um, is the part of the, the log where it's still burning and it's kind of turning uh, orange red so I'm just gonna adding a few on the log from the outside I'm just carefully uh, paint on the, the logs use the uh, small tip of the brush and uh, I'm trying to not overdo it and I'll just keep working on that until it looks complete I think I just need a few more here and maybe here so now I'm gonna rinse my brush and I'm gonna grab some of the yellow and uh, white and maybe a little bit of orange for this and a little bit of uh, red on this side and also underneath of the rocks where the fire reflecting on them so now I'm gonna rinse my brush again and I'm gonna grab some of the blue a little bit of uh, red a little bit of uh, dark purple and some more blue maybe a little bit more red I'm trying to um, mix the uh, warm gray um, for, the, for the rocks so I'm gonna just try this maybe a little bit more white a little too bright so I'm gonna add a little bit more blue tone it down and I'll try again hmm. I'm trying on this side also more blue so these are uh, for the highlights of uh, the rocks and I'm gonna try different shade of uh, warm gray maybe a little bit lighter so the highlight I think I'm gonna maybe go ahead and fill the whole thing with this color for now try to draw the shape again so now I'm gonna add the uh, shadow part for this 
rock. A little bit darker. Now it looks a little bit better. There's some more, uh, maybe a little bit of blue. So I'm gonna move on to this one. I'm gonna start with the um, top part and just redraw the the shape of this rock. So I'm gonna paint the maybe the shadow part. So now I'm gonna add some white to the mixture, and I'm gonna add the highlight for this rock. Now I'm gonna move to the one next to it and I'm gonna add a little bit of blue on top I'm gonna add a little bit of dark purple for the shadow part of this one and a little bit of more black for the um, shadow part of uh, the other one so I'm gonna just view out uh, this area right here where it's really dark. I'm adding a little bit more black for the the other one. So what I'm trying to do here is uh, I'm just building up the values for the rocks. Um, I simplify the values into three main ones. Uh, the shadow part, which is the darkest color. Um, the mid-tone part, uh, which is the medium dark color. And the highlight, um, which is the, the lightest color. And I just keep those values in mind as I work on um, building up the layers for the rocks. So as you can see here, yeah, I'm just working on the uh, shadow part of the rocks, which is the, the darkest color. Um, and I'm gonna just lie down on the uh, dark part of the, the rocks first for now. And I'm just carefully uh, looking at the reference photo as I um, work on this. I want to make sure that um, uh, I get the the right uh, shape for the rocks. So I'm just using the uh, sketch that I made earlier for the rocks as a guideline, and from there I'm just gonna um, working on building up the details for each of the rocks. And now I'm gonna uh, start moving on to the mid tone of um, the rocks. And I'm gonna mix um, a lighter color than the shadow part. And I'm just kinda uh, light out the first layer and adjust the uh, value as I go. So this one here is a little bit too dark. But I'm gonna finish the shadow part. And I'm gonna add a little bit of more white. Oh, now it's a little too bright, so I'm adding some blue back and kind of blend it out. As you can see, I just um, go back and forth with the values and adjust them as I go. Sometimes um, the shadow may be a little bit darker or lighter, depending on where the rock is placed. Um, if it's placed in the dark part of the scenery, uh, then I have to make sure that I use darker values than the um, the one that are on top and uh, closer to the fire. So now, because uh, this part is in the shadow part, so I'm gonna just kind of quickly light down the um, dark color for the whole area just for now. 
Then I'm going back to the ones that are uh, on top and I'm gonna tone down the highlights of these rocks because it looks a little bit too bright to me so it's just darken it a little bit now I'm switching to number 6 filbert brush and first I just dip it in the water and I'm gonna have more black here I'm gonna use the uh, same mixture and I'm gonna start um, working on the details for the lower part of the painting and again I'm uh, starting with the darkest part uh, and here is almost like uh, black just black and I want to make sure that uh, all the uh, darkest value of this area is uh, laying down first before I move on to um, the mid-tone of these rocks down here so I'm going back with some black I'm gonna add another layer on top of this one and some more black for the corner of these rocks and maybe underneath this one and this one now I'm gonna move to the one uh, underneath that one and I'm kinda need to sketch out uh, the shape of this one again using just the dark color I'm also adding a uh, more layer for the shadow parks of uh, some of the rocks like this one right here and now I'm gonna add some more white to the mixture and some more blue so this is gonna be for the mid-tone of the lower rocks I'm gonna add some more red and I didn't uh, clean my brush even though I changed to um, a different color so I'm gonna add white again some more red now I'm gonna paint the highlight uh, of the rocks um, the parts where the fire actually reflecting on them so they kind of look a little bit reddish um, blue as you can see here I'm trying to add that to the field area also on this side and some right here now I'm adding more red as I go back into the uh, fire I'm adding some of the deep red to the rocks so these are the uh, reflecting from the fire I'm going back with some more black and I'm gonna work on the shadow parts uh, of the rocks I'm gonna add some water to the red and I'm gonna just lay it down at the bottom part of the painting and now I'm gonna clean my brush I'm going back with some more black and I'm gonna um, paint the shadow part of the rock so somewhere here and some here and some more here also on this side in the bottom part so now I'm gonna get uh, dark red I'm adding to the shadow and clean my brush so I'm gonna go in back with some white mixed with the red and I'm gonna lay on top so that is too bright and I'm gonna 
I think I have some more blue. Now layer on top of that. So now I uh, have some of the lighter blue in number eight round brush. So I'm gonna mix some of the light blue with some of the dark red. And I have some more black. So I'm gonna add a tiny bit of that. Some more red. Some more black. So now I'm gonna try to paint the highlight part of the rug at the bottom. I'm going back with the dark color for the shadow. I need some white. So I'm gonna just kind of add that on top. I'm gonna soften the edge of this rock a little bit by adding some highlight to it. Now I'm adding some blue for the highlight parts of the um, bottom rocks. And um, it's because of the sky um, color reflecting on them. So you can see some blue. I'm adding some more, maybe for this one again, and then darken it a little bit. Also, a few here, just a uh, just a little bit, and then some of the purple because of the fire reflecting. I'm also adding some more black for the dark part. I'm adding one more layer for um, the shadow of the rocks and I'm using uh, the dark blue color so I need some more here now I'm gonna mix some of the uh, blue gray dark blue gray and I'm gonna tone down some of the highlights part of the rocks and I'm gonna add some texture to the rocks too. So I need this part to be darker. And then adding some blue to a few places. So now I'm gonna switch to number six liner brush. And first I'm gonna just add some water to it. And I'm gonna grab some white and some of yellow need some more yellow and a little bit more white so this color is gonna be for the fire sparks and I'm gonna start by painting the really thin lines and I'm gonna follow the direction of the sparks as you can see from the reference photo I'm gonna start from the bottom and slowly moving up to the top part. Now I'm moving on to the one that are outside. I'm going back to the middle part of the fire and I'm just gonna add some more highlights to it. So I'm just using the bright yellow colors for this. So now I'm gonna go back to um, Building up the sparks for the fire using the bright yellow color. Next, I'm gonna add the orange color for the spark, but there are not too many of these, so I'm gonna just gonna adding a few here. And now I'm gonna add the bright orange and some of the red to the top part of the fire. And some over here. Then I'm going back to the um, highlight part of the fire using the bright yellow color. And now I'm back to the um, fire spark using some of the orange color. 
then I'm switching to the bright yellow color and I'm just gonna continue adding more fire spark even though I paint them in different size and uh, different colors but I try to uh, keep them in the same directions so that I can see the movement of the um, the fire as in the reference photo and now I'm just adding some more highlights for the rocks that are closer to the fire and I'm using the bright uh, orange color and these highlights are much smaller and brighter than the ones before so I'm gonna just uh, use very small stroke then I'm switching to the yellow color and I'm just gonna add a uh, more highlights for the fire so now i'm gonna mix some of deep red with some of the light blue and i'm gonna add some of the black so i'm gonna add some more red and i'm gonna add this color to some of the plants and some of the rocks Then I'm going back to the trees on the background and I'm just gonna paint some highlights uh, with that color. Yeah, you don't have to do this step if you don't uh, like to, but um, I kinda like this so I'm gonna just keep going. And now I'm gonna add some more black to the shadow parts and I'm gonna clean my brush because we are all done so as always I wait for all the paint are completely dry then I carefully removing all the washi tape around the border of the painting And here is the closer look of the final painting. Um, even though this video is about an hour long, it did take me about two hours to complete this painting because I skipped uh, some of the unnecessary parts. Uh, so please feel free to pause the video if you feel like you need to. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did paint along with me, uh, please share your version of this painting with me if you can. I would love to see it. Also, uh, please let me know in the comment below if you like to see more video like this in the future. Or you can just simply give it a thumbs up so that I know. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again in my next video. Bye.